In today's video, we are going to talk about five DaVinci Resolve hacks that you need to know about but may not. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into number one, which is automated color management. Yes, if you don't already know, DaVinci Resolve can automatically manage all of your video clips to the correct color space with minimal effort. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to come down to the right hand settings cog here. You're going to click on color management. Now, the way that I do it is I choose DaVinci YRGB color managed and I do automatic color management. Make sure that is checked. I set it to HDR and then I do SDR Rec 709 as the output color space. So what that is telling DaVinci Resolve is it's telling it that I want it to, um, on the clips that I select, automatically convert or manage the clips uh, color space. And I'll show you how to do that. So after we make sure that those are selected, I'm going to come over to all of these clips here from a wedding that I shot a few weeks ago. Now, these were filmed in Sony S-Log3. You can actually see here that these are in log. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to select all of them because I know that they're all in Sony S-Log3 and I want them all to be converted to, uh, let's say, my the, the DaVinci Resolve color space, which is the, the YRGB color managed. It's like a wide gamut that DaVinci reuses. And then when I export it, it'll be direct 709. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to come down to input color space. So I'm telling DaVinci Resolve what color space these clips were recorded in so that it knows how to properly convert it. And that way you don't have to do a color space transform for every single clip. So I know that these were recorded in Sony S-Log3 in the S gamut 3 dot cine. So if I click on that, then immediately it converts it to uh, basically a rec 709 and I can work with it like that. And so you can see that even just on my timeline here, this clip is now, uh, it's, it's converted to rec 709 and I don't have to do nearly as much work to color grade it. Moving on to hack number two, which is a performance hack. If your computer and your codecs are compatible with each other for hardware accelerated decoding and encoding, then you'll want to make sure that you have this setting selected. So instead of going to the gear cog down here, I'm actually going to come up to the DaVinci Resolve text up in the top left hand corner and I'm going to click preferences. From here, I'm going to go to system and decode options. So you can see here that I have selected use GPU for Blackmagic RAW decode. In this case, that doesn't apply to me because I shoot with Sony, but if I used a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, for example, that recorded in B-RAW, it would use the graphics card to decode that. Next, I have decode H.264, H.265 using hardware acceleration. And then I have NVIDIA selected because I have an NVIDIA graphics card. Now, I can show you right here that if I scrub through this clip, it is scrubbing through it very quickly, but this is a 4K high bit rate, 10 bit uh, color, uh, really large video file. And so if I were to do CPU encoding, which I will actually show you right now, if I go to uh, preferences here and I deselect that, click save, and then it says that it won't update till I restart resolve. So I'll quickly do that. So you can see here that now that I've opened it up and I don't have GPU encode enabled, when I scrub through it, it takes a lot longer for it to show me a preview of my clip. It is, the performance is just significantly worse and I'll get much more dropped frames this way. So make sure you have GPU decode enabled in your settings for better performance if your codec and your graphics card are indeed compatible. Okay, tip number three is another performance hack that will significantly increase your performance in some cases. So let me go ahead and go back to my preferences. And this time we're actually gonna go to user. And from here, we're gonna go to project save and load. Now, this one is a bit tricky because it has a trade-off. So right here, you can see save settings. There are uh, live say, I have live save enabled. Now, what live save basically does is, well, it just is, is basically constantly saving. Whenever you make a change, it's going to save way more frequently than trying to manually remember how to do it. In some cases, this is, can significantly hurt your timeline performance. 
For example, when you zoom in and out on all your clips and it has to, and you make a change and, and it has to live save, it might take a second for it to update and it can cause performance issues. But of course the trade-off is you have to remember to save more often. So if you're having a bunch of performance issues and you feel comfortable just wanting to save on your own rather than the automatic save, then you can deselect live save and it will save you some performance. Okay, tip number four. We all know that S curves are essential when you are color grading. And one of my favorite things, which I've talked about in a past video, is to make sure you have editable splines enabled. And what you can do here is you can just do S curve adjustments to be able to increase contrast. However, something that happens when you increase the contrast using the S curve is it also inherently increases the saturation. So let's say that you don't want it to increase the saturation at the same time. You can see here that the, the skin tones and the reds and everything are getting a little bit too harsh. And so I'd have to go back in and desaturate a little bit to compensate that. So instead of having to do that, what I can do is I can just select the luminance uh, button <laughs> over here on the side for my custom curves. Now, when I go in and make an adjustment, it is going to significantly uh, reduce the saturation and compensate for that. So it's not actually going to be changing the saturation when I increase the contrast, which you may or may not want. And if you want to reset it, then you can just click the link button here and it will go back to uh, having selected all of your YRGB curves. All right, before we get into the last tip, I just want to ask a quick favor of you. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that would be a huge help to me as I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel and to share my knowledge of DaVinci Resolve with all of you awesome people. I would really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get into tip number five. And that is last but not least artificial motion blur. Now this is only available in the studio version of resolve, but it's good for you to know that you have because it becomes useful in a lot of situations. For example, I shot this wedding in 60 FPS for the majority of the time, which means that my shutter speed was one over 120. However, if I have a clip like this one, for example, where maybe I want to play it back in real time, it's going to look a little bit choppy and jumpy. And that's because my shutter speed is higher than one over 150 and it's going to look just slightly unnatural. So what I can do to compensate for that is add artificial motion blur. So to do that, all you have to do is come down to this little icon right here. It's motion effects. Click here. Now you actually have access to uh, noise reduction as well as motion blur, but we'll get into that in another video. So right here you have motion blur and I typically don't have to do too much with this to make it look good. But what I do is I usually set it to either medium or small, the motion range, I believe is what that says. And the motion blur, I just set it to maybe 30 to 45. And what that's going to do for me is that's going to, if I zoom in here, you can see, and I'll actually zoom in on her dress right here. You can see that when I increase this, it's going to add artificial motion blur. It's going to kind of estimate how the pixels are moving and it's going to guess as to how the motion blur should have been calculated if it were actually caught in camera. And so the reason why this is great is because now if I go ahead and zoom in on this clip, if uh, I play it back for you, the motion looks a lot more natural. It doesn't look quite as jumpy and it helps with that. And you can even exaggerate it a little bit more if need be. Go to maybe all the way to 70 and that way it looks nice and smooth and not nearly as choppy as it did before. Very easy, very simple effect. Um, but again, just be aware that it is only in the studio version of Resolve that you have access to that. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. I apologize for my sinus and my congestion. I have been sick for the past couple weeks. Uh, so we're trying to get over that, but I'm coming back strong and I'm going to be uploading more YouTube videos for you guys so that you can learn more about DaVinci Resolve. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Recording. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat>